So, uh, hi. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Is this me? There's no audio. Oh, come here, boy. Bro. I kick off. What? Nice. Haha. So you might be asking yourself, what is this? Well, last week I attended a game jam. No, not Bracky's game jam, but my own little game jam. I wanted to try and make an online multiplayer game in only just a week. Did I succeed? Eh. But anyways, back in my day, aka two years ago, I created a small little game called Bean Wars. It was basically where I followed an online tutorial on how to make an online multiplayer game. At that point, I hadn't even been making games for three months, so it was very, uh, let's say, not good. Damn, that's a lot of settings. The mouse isn't even locked on the screen. What the fuck, bro? That's a many. Oh, yeah. Bro, who the? F but anyways, I thought, hmm, what if I just try and remake the? Uh, I took inspiration from it. But yeah, let's go into uh, the first day. Very exciting. Okay, day one. The first thing I did was make a new player controller and getting that to like feel good, you know? And and then I realized the character is just a bean. Even though the game is based on beans, I wanted to change it a bit. So I made this very cursed model. It's a, it's a bean with legs. But now it's time to actually add some networking. The networking thing I'm using is not Steam because I do not have $100 in my wallet. So I'm using something called Photon Pun 2, and it, it's free, so that's nice. But one bonus is I already kind of know my way around Photon Pun 2. Then I slowly got the networking down, you know, sending over the character's position. The way I do that is you add, you have the character, and then you just add a transform view that sends over the rotation and transform. Then I send over the shooting and aiming. And the way you do that is using something called remote procedure calls, which are just functions or voids that are being called over the internet. And I thought, well, this plane is looking really dull, so I just made a quick map. It's also kind of bad, but it's good for now. Then I thought, mm, you can't really have a shooter without nicknames, so I added the ability to choose a nickname. And what better way to use a nickname than to add a leaderboard? I think like, after one and a half hours, I actually got it working. Then I also set up a timer. And then when the timer reaches zero, you're sent back to the lobby. Then I also made a main menu. That's actually everything for day one. I literally woke up at eight o'clock, spent three to four hours trying to work out how a server browser works. I'm gonna create a match. Now we have match, 1 out of 10. Now I'm gonna create another match. It does not work. When you had a match, the, the button, it shows up. But then when you create another one, it then removes the old match. So only one match is actually shown. And that, that's, that's really bad. So I just took some time working on that. Then also to the lobby, I actually made the players able to ready up kind of works. That also took me like one and a half hours. Then I remodeled the pistol and reanimated it. And I also reanimated the shotgun. I also made another map so you can actually tell the difference when you're in the lobby and when you're in a match. And then on day two, I got to, I actually got to playtesting with some of my friends. Oh my god, new map, same exact map except for palm trees. You be, you, you shitty gun maker. <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on the develop. Blame it on the engine. And then we have shit like the fucking musket, which one shot people. <laughs> I was bored, so I added it. And, and I put then... my uh, musket bullets in my uh, pistol. <laughs> okay, so today I fixed the leaderboard, so now it doesn't break. The reason why it didn't work was because the way I designed it, I accidentally made it so uh, it would carry information from room to room. 
So let's say you had John in one match and you had Mary in another match, then John would come up on Mary's leaderboard and the other way around, and that makes no sense. I fixed the ready up system, so it actually works now. I also implement the gun system, uh, so that in the future it would be more easy to add new game modes and custom loadouts for players. So before I was just spawning the players, they already had the guns on them when they spawned. And that's not good. But the way I do it now is I have a sync guns function where it sends over two integers and then I have two lists of guns on the gun manager and then the other players use those integers to get the guns from the gun manager. I also added a health bar, ammo counter, also when you get hit now like a white red thing flashes on your screen. When you're creating a match you can now also set the amount of minutes a round is. The player also can't stick to walls now. That's nice. Add wall running. No. Why not? We got wall stick. So that's that's really all I did day three. Okay, so on today, day four, I spent a lot of time working on a new map. Other than that, I don't actually think I did much else. Well, I, I did play test with my little brother, and he actually gave me some very good feedback on the game. So that's probably what I'll be doing on day 5. I, I added a new map, which compared to the other one is way more orange. I went for more like an urban style, but also not really. Compared to the other one, it's way smaller. So now I have a medium and a small map, so we got some variety there. I also added some new guns, the M16 and a revolver. When creating a match, you can also choose the maps you want to actually play on. So if there's a map you think, oh, I don't want to play on that, that shit, then you can just filter it off and you don't have to play on it. I also finally got around to adding a pause menu so you don't have to exit the game each time you want to uh, go back to the menu. But yeah, not, not so much on day 5. Making maps actually takes longer than I thought, so yeah. Okay, so it's day six and I did not really add that much today. I fixed a couple of bugs, added a new weapon, the Thompson. Oh yeah, so I'm sitting here editing the video right now and apparently the audio got corrupted or something. I don't know what happened. Oh yeah, also. Oh yeah, also. Oh yeah, also. But we won't get to hear what I did on day six really. So let's just hope it wasn't something that important. <clears throat> added the new map uh it like has kind of sandy vibes up against like a, a mountain i don't know where it's located but it's it, it's it's a map i think it actually plays really well also there's an options tab now which actually saves i think i'm just gonna like add some sound effects and that's really it and then i'm gonna publish the game uh, i'm just gonna put something on screen i guess and if you want to play the game, you can absolutely click the link in the description to go play it. It's a very good game. The best game out there. It's uh, beantastic. It's being serious here for a second. It is worth acknowledging that the first person shooter genre, with its emphasis on weaponry and combat, can be perceived as violent. This is also true of Bean Wars. Well, I think I'll just let my friend Peter Griffin say the rest. Okay, let's see, let's try- What? You stupid n- With this video, I actually learned a lot on how to make networking, and also how hard it is to actually uh, make a multiplayer map. It's made in a week, so don't expect the next Call of Duty game. But I think it's actually pretty okay, considering it was made in a week. But again, if you liked it, like the video. If you didn't, dislike it. And if you want to see more, then, you know, subscribe. See ya!